Howdy folks, uh, Professor Snart here, checking in on a Thursday about noon, a little afternoon. Uh, hope you're having a good day. Uh, hope you are getting settled into sort of the rhythm of our course and getting used to our due date setup and some of the mechanics of how uh, assignments are set up. You know, often we're working in maybe a Google Doc or our portfolio site, but also um, the discussion board within Blackboard. I know it's a lot of component pieces, but hopefully you're kind of seeing how they all mix together. Here's my picture of my backyard on Friday morning for our snow day. I made a dent in the shoveling and then just decided it was a good time to have a fire. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our due dates. Again, I'm recording this on Feb 15. Hopefully you had a good Valentine's Day. Um, so that's our due date for Unit 4. I'll take a quick backwards look into that and then we have that reply piece. And then we move into uh, one of the units that is right before our sort of culminating piece of our short fiction part of our class here uh, called Significant Objects. And it's actually one of the my favorite um, uh, writing exercises that we do, maybe in the whole class actually, but we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, let's see. Okay, so unit number four. Again, largely about building um, a sort of set uh, or a glossary, a set of terms that we can begin obviously not to use in our short stories, but to think about certain aspects of short stories that really need to be in place. So we had this uh, slide deck that we all were accessing, so we need to be a little bit careful about what we're doing in there, not to delete things that others have done. But you can see the deck, you can access it through the link, but you can see the deck right here, and it's just off the bottom of my screen, so I'm not going to be able to scroll through it. But again, uh, you're adding two terms. Whoops, oh, I will scroll through, haha. -ha. So now we have a bunch of uh, you know definitions that are being populated. Again, always write your name in here, uh, so we, so I sort of know who's done what. A uh, nice little link, right, to maybe a source or a couple of sources, an example that you've got. So this all is looking good. There's still a couple of um, options left. Again, the spacing can get weird. Things go off the page. Don't worry so much about the formatting. I can always clean that up. But again, lots of people, right, building in these definitions. So remember that you want to use this discussion board to simply post the definitions that you made. You don't have to repost or post the words that you define. Sorry, you don't have to repost the whole definition. That would be duplicating a little too much. But we want to kind of collect um, what every sort of attach everybody's name to that list of words because then again we have this reply component where you can go into the discussion board, see what people have posted or what words they have posted, kind of look at the. Um, slide deck here and if I wanted to respond to Kat's uh, description or definition, maybe her example, um, to this idea of falling action or denouement, maybe it's a word I didn't know, maybe it's a word I kind of knew but I'd never um, known a good example of it, I could use the discussion board to find her thread, her initial thread, and reply to it saying, hey, thanks for the definition, here's another good example, or it makes me think of this, or whatever, whatever. So again, working in that slide deck, but actually using the Blackboard um, uh, uh, discussion board tool to allow for a little more direct collaboration or, or conversation back and forth. So again, that's wrapping up uh, on the Thursday, Feb 15, and then we have that window up until Sunday to do the reply part. Again, you might be uh, noticing that it's helpful to finish up the main work, be thinking about your replies, but then move on to the next unit, which is what I'm gonna do right here. Again, one of my favorites, kind of quirky, and I just ran into it by total fluke a few years ago. Okay, so we're calling it the Significant Objects Writing Assignment, and it's a title that I borrow from uh, this little piece that I heard on a radio show called Marketplace on NPR. So uh, the, we're going to be writing about what are usually called tchotchkes, you know, these little sort of doohickeys we have around our house, more or less meaningless, kind of quirky, idiosyncratic, odd-looking things. Don't lie, I know you have some. It's pronounced kind of like this, but it has this weird spelling that you can find I've used somewhere else. Uh, okay, so I want you to listen to the, the uh, Marketplace radio piece. It's just a few minutes long. It's not a huge thing. You can also discover the, the direct website. There is, in fact, a website devoted to the Significant Objects product uh, project, I should say, generically, but also this particular example that I really like that, that you should read. And then you're going to find yourself in a group with... And I'm going to show you here the discussion board all set up with group names. So when you go to post your thing, you're posting 
um, just finding your thread and kind of replying to my initial post and then I'm gonna find my way back to the unit. Oh, I gotta do something, okay. Okay, so here's the assignment and the explanation. You're gonna write your significant object short story and I'll describe that in just a sec, but again, all the uh, instructions are right here. Uh, you're gonna write using a Google Doc and I'll explain why in just a second, or even if you cut and paste from something else into the Google Doc, you need to submit a URL to that Google Doc. Make sure that you include a picture of your tchotchke and it has to be a real thing from your life, probably your house, probably a closet or shelf somewhere, that you actually have and can hold in your hand and turn around and you'll have to take a picture using your phone or whatever um, so you can feel the material of the thing, um, understand sort of its scale or its size and shape. Uh, again, like the, the all sides or aspects, the bottom part of it, the very top, not just that front view. So when you put the picture in, we'll get a pretty limited view, but you as the writer should have a kind of comprehensive 360, really tactile uh, experience of the thing. It has to be an actual thing. You can't just Google tchotchke. It's good exercise in spelling it, but that's about it. Okay, so you're going to write uh, a 250 to 500 words max, so we're keeping this really short, story that gives some value to the tchotchke, and this is how it connects back to what we're doing here, is the Significant Objects Project, and that's what we hear in this marketplace thing, is, uh, I think it was a group of economists, actually. They had this idea, is could you take otherwise valueless things, right, just these little trinkets that we have around our house, that have no public value, they might have sentimental personal value, but no public value, and could you then attach a story to that, a completely fictitious and fake backstory, and now all of a sudden this otherwise valueless thing has value. So they uh, conscripted a bunch of writers, some famous, some semi-famous, some not so famous, to write these very short but like super interesting, descriptive, odd, kind of funny sometimes backstories or histories for these objects, completely made up. And then they tried to sell the objects on, uh, on eBay. Full disclosure, they like told people that this backstory was completely made up. But all of a sudden, these otherwise completely useless objects or valueless objects were selling sometimes for like two bucks, five bucks, upwards of 50, I think even more sometimes. Um, and it's kind of a funny like thought experiment here about how we can take something that is materially not valuable at all, except maybe to the one person who owns it. And we as writers can attach stories to these things and all of a sudden they take on value. So I love the way that writing folds into this thing. Now I get that there's lots of kind of problems with this because people buy it just for the novelty of the thing or because maybe it's a semi-famous author who wrote it. So the value isn't really even in the story, it's like in the name attached to it. But I still think given the sheer number of these that sold for more than just like nothing, uh, it speaks to how the power of storytelling, of giving something a narrative gives it like value to other people and that's fundamentally what we're doing here uh, and again this is like a really funny example if you want to read it and find others on the website or tchotchkes okay so you're going to write your own remember don't just tell us a story real or made up about how the tchotchke was handed down from a grandmother and you really love your grandmother so it's very valuable nobody's going to want to buy that just because it's important to you you have to give this thing a quirky you know, uh, interesting, meaningful, crazy backstory that all of a sudden imbues it with some interest, with some value. Again, this is all like laid out here so you can return to it. Short, so we have to be really descriptive and uh, make choices about what um, uh, details we're going to include and we can't include everything. Uh, use the picture, but again, the reason that it's important is that you use an, you use an actual tchotchke is because you want to build in aspects of the actual thing, the material that it's made from, uh, the way that it's mounted, for example, into the backstory, and that's what part of what you'll see uh, makes this one so funny is that you can tell that the writer like built into the story some aspects that you might otherwise overlook if you just looked at the figure as a kind of a whole and not at the component parts that make it up. Avoid the common mistake that I just uh, enumerated, right? You're not just telling us about why it's valuable to you. This needs to be valuable to other people. 
And so your significant object's uh, story, your short, short story, is due by the main due date for this unit, and that means that you've written it in a Google Doc, you've set it up so that other people can at least comment, if not actually edit, but comment, so you need to change the sharing function, and then post that shared URL to your group's thread. So again, find your, your name in that group, and then reply to my initial post, um, and then post the URL. So that way, everybody in the group will have access to everybody else's document. And so the reply component here is then by the second due date of this particular unit, you within your group are going to go into everybody else's document and comment on the thing throughout. Use the commenting features, this little button here, uh, right? This comment box will come up. You can type your comment. Um, you highlight some text that you're interested in. Comment, oh, this was great. I love the description. Oh, I was a bit confused here. Or, oh, there might be a typo or oh, maybe a different word, whatever you want to do. Make sure you click the comment button so it saves it in there. And it usually works best, and maybe it will be set up to do this, if you actually sign in, like clearly I did here, so that your name is attached to the comment, otherwise it just looks like anonymous comment. And for grading purposes, I need to have a name attached to the comment. So even if you don't sign in, if you're just commenting anonymously within every comment, add your name. That's why it's easier to actually just sign in with your Google credential. Okay, so a little help uh, thing here about creating a Google Doc if you've never done it before. And then the sharing part that we wanna make sure we get right. People can comment, not just view, that's not gonna work. So it's really important uh, and part of your grade to make sure that you build the document correctly and then share it and post the URL on time so that other people can get in there and do some commenting. So I think it's a really fun activity. It's a great writing exercise. It's contextualized in a fun way with this whole significant object project. Gets us thinking about the value of writing kind of generally. And it's our first opportunity to really use the Google Doc structure to be commenting directly on people's work, which is obviously what we're gonna do. Turning around as I run out of breath to our uh, workshop, which is looming on the horizon. So again, you really want to be working on this short story now so that you're not rushing to finish it at the last minute after having wrapped up uh, everything for unit five. So again, keeping these parallel things going, our unit to unit work, but also kind of looking towards that, uh, the, the workshop that we have coming up. So that'll, the workshop then will conclude the short story part or short fiction part of our class. And then we move on to uh, uh, a short piece uh, on or thinking about creative nonfiction and then to dramatic writing, and then uh, poetry. Okay, so we cover the gamut. We move really quickly. Uh, maybe I'll FYI this now, but there's not really an opportunity, or it's not built into the course, for you to get feedback, let's say, on significant objects or your short story, and, um, and make revisions. I hope and encourage people will do that, and if you wanna meet with me to get some further feedback, you're more than welcome to. I hope folks will do that just because they're motivated to, but there's nothing in the course that will require you to make those revisions. There's just too much territory we have to cover. We really just have to keep, uh, you know, moving forward. Okay, so I really look forward to those significant objects uh, projects. We're building it in Google Docs, but I'd also encourage people to, um, uh, uh, or sorry, let me rephrase that. It's a really good opportunity to get used to that uh, platform and the whole commenting thing, uh, especially if you've never done it before. But if you run into technical problems, by all means, be in touch with me. Uh, we really wanna discover those earlier rather than later so we can take care of them. Okay, so I look forward to reading everyone's work and I'll talk with you soon.